Hello everybody, this is Gene Star134 coming to you with a new movie review, and as you can see, this is The Rise of the Guardians. Now my first comment off just by the beginning of this movie is when are DreamWorks and Disney just gonna either merge or have another battle in another country? Maybe a mini island, because these two companies constantly go back to back to back to back to back with movies that span in between a traditional values for children and family. So it's pretty interesting to see DreamWorks kind of just constantly arguing and fighting with Disney and Pixar. So enough of that. Side note, sorry about the little bit of the rant, but Rise of the Guardians. Now coming into this movie, I had slight optimism after seeing a lot of the movies that have been shelled out recently by various companies when it comes to animation. I mean, there are some that are high up there and there are some that are lower down, but they're still a lot better than most movies when it comes to at least acting and general visual effects and the overall, yes, it is computer generated so it can be played around with more, but even then, acting is still a lot better compared to those who are physically acting. So, let's delve a little more deeper into it. The main story starts as you get the sign of the first main character, rising from the waters, and you realize after a cool minute, if you've seen any of the previews even, that this is Jack Frost. And it's interesting because you see this simplistic character and if anything the only thing that kind of displayed or dismayed me was his voice seemed a little bit more mature than the actual look of the character and if anything that is similar to real life in the fact that some voices are not meant for certain people so little nitpick here and there the Eventually, you do get some build-up towards the character. You find out that Jack Frost is this character who was named by the Man in the Moon. And, ironically, the Man in the Moon never speaks a word. Symbolically, he always directs the characters, but never says anything. And it's, it's pretty light sensed on that one but not going into too much detail he's chosen to become the fifth guardian out of all of the other guardians that they have including Santa Claus, the Easter Rabbit, the Tooth Fairy and Sandman now each of these characters have been developed into either a pet of the directors and the company or just this idealistic way of how they would actually be in real life and it it really is an interesting way that they put into it, but at the same time, it seems a bit more personalized. But I digress even more. So he refuses to join the Guardians because he is mad at the Man on the Moon because the Man on the Moon never gave him any de designation to why he was existed, but cannot be seen by the little kids or anyone in general. So he holds some form of anger towards his creator. And it, it's more of those kind of angsty characters that is borderline high school in so many words. Uh, not to delve too much into detail, but he refuses and they find out that a new enemy is on the rise and that is darkness. Or whatever you call it, fear or the self-proclaimed name that majority of people would identify with is the Boogeyman. So the Boogeyman's coming back and he's been gone since the Middle Ages but he's also learned some new tricks. And the ongoing movie starts as Jack tries to figure out his past and who he actually is and along with the build-up of the Boogeyman becoming more and more powerful until he will either strike or do something completely nonchalant and re irrelevant comparing to what he even says in the movie in that Jack is a neutral party and that he's not even supposed to deal with him. So it completely throws you off when Jack starts going into the mix for no reason other than he wants to, to feel overall at that point. It's not too bad. It's like any other 
movie, kids movie, it really doesn't bring much to the table. The story is very simplistic. The plot's very wishy-washy, and even the character development is a little light on it. Yes, they delve into Santa Claus a lot, but they really cut thin on the other characters. Yes, Santa Claus is probably the most recognized and idealistic character that everybody can see, but at the same time, if you're going to give this character some development, then you have to do so to the rest of the cast. And they really don't do that. But what can I say? He's all, uh, Santa Claus is also played by Alec Baldwin, so of course he's going to get a little more detail than most. So that's all, again, nitpicking. As far as the movie goes, it, in general, it's it's fair. It's not bad. It's not good. It's a light-hearted romp. I mean, I did find myself getting involved in the movie, and that is what any movie should do, any sign of a good movie at least, is get you self-involved, get you tied up in the story, get you somewhat feeling for it. And yes, it had its light-hearted chuckles, but its plot varied from time to time. Its pacing was a little bit off. And at times where I would finally get, like, kind of emotionally invested in the movie, it would stop and then kind of drag on again and then get you again. And yes, it may work for certain types of movies, but as a children's movie, especially with the complexities of what you're throwing in, making it a little more understandable for kill, like for kids or, is pretty difficult. But it's like they try to do the same thing compared to Wreck-It Ralph. Wreck-It Ralph outspoke to a generation, and that's what they tried to do with this movie, is outspeak to a generation. And they just kind of cut it short for both sides. They didn't reach the adults, and yet they didn't reach the children. Again, that's not to say it's a bad movie. It's actually very stunning visually. It's probably one of the best I've seen so far short of Wreck-It Ralph. But... Aside from that, it really doesn't leave much of an impression on me. Would I watch it again? Yeah. As a good family movie, as a good movie to watch and sit down with loved ones, yes. But as a movie that would leave an imprint on me, not so much. But check it out for yourself. You'll enjoy it. It's still pretty funny. It's still pretty tender, loving. It's a good family movie, but it's not the best I've seen. But I hope you enjoyed this review. This is Gene Starwin, 34, signing out.